Welcome to Fine Cuisine and Etiquette with your host, Oliver Gerald the Eater, your guide to the finer things in life. And let's see what peasant tonic I've got here. So I'll be debasing myself with Nitro Pepsi. Pepsi, of course, has been poisoning Americans since 1893, but instead of accepting their lot, some whiny colonials like to bellyache about the carbon dioxide in normal carbonated beverages. Soda peddlers force water and carbon dioxide into their foul waste at pressures of up to 1,200 pounds per square inch, and that produces the trademark fizzy consistency. But nitrogen-infused drinks include a widget at the bottom of the can that produces a thick, foamy head when opened. And unlike CO2, nitrogen gas doesn't produce acidity. That's ideal for those who have acid reflux issues, like to drink smoother, or are too big a p***y to have carbonated beverages. With nitro drinks, you're meant to savor it, like you would a fine beer. But one of the most famous examples is the Guinness Stout, a prototypical Irish beverage, which should tell you everything you need to know. The fact that Guinness is wildly popular in Boston, where the Americans first plotted their traitorous activities, should be the proverbial nail in the coffin. Of course, given that Americans are functionally illiterate in both math and science, like a five-year-old trying to read Chaucer, I'm a bit surprised they don't poison themselves while trying to add nitrogen gas to Pepsi, but life is full of surprises. And again, I'm partially befuddled that the American palate is apparently too delicate for CO2 bubbles in their drinks, but then again, this is a people who idolize luminaries like Justin Bieber and Zac Efron, and who need safe spaces in their institutions of higher learning. So just know that by being in the same room as this Nitro Pepsi with its daintier complexion, I feel partially neutered. So, like every married man. Pepsi claims their Nitro beverage isn't just a cola, it's an experience. An experience like wearing a dress, but an experience nonetheless. The easy texture, the mesmerizing cascade of tiny bubbles, the silky, frothy foam head, the unapologetically Pepsi taste, it sparks connection and conversation. The cola proprietor recommends a hard pour, like dispensing a beer. There's just one problem. Unlike a beer, this doesn't get me nearly fuddled enough to make me forget how f***ing stupid this looks. But if I completely ensconce all self-respect, pride, and masculinity, and do actually try this placid liquid, you're probably wondering how it tastes. Well, PepsiCo is correct. This is softer than a soft drink but that's because it's flatter than my second ex-wife, and it has less pep than a paraplegic. I have no desire to hand over my testicles to Pepsi, and if I do have to soil myself with a carbonated beverage, I'll stick with the normal kind, and I'll save the nitro for a kitschy televisual program from the 1990s. This thick, creamy foam might befit Gertie at the Third Street brothel after she services a client, but Oliver Gerald doesn't go for such perverted shenanigans. While sober. So I give Pepsi Nitro two silver spoons out of five, and if you excuse me, I'll be guzzling 50-year-old cognac to get this abysmal taste out of my mouth. Be sure to show your appreciation for my efforts with a like, and I shall return to educate the great unwashed masses and all those of good letters and breeding in the finer things in life and delightful cuisine.